Hello and welcome to another episode of Loxone Explained, the video series for all tech enthusiasts, Loxone partners and those looking to become automation installers. In our current video series, we're taking a closer look at the topic of lighting. In the last episode, we touched on the various types of products, interfaces and technologies that could be involved in a room's lighting installation. However, making sure you've chosen the right combination of these is only half the battle. A professional lighting installation should also include a lighting design that has been thought through to the end and really takes into account how the customer is going to interact with the lighting. And this is exactly what this video will cover. By the way, in the next part of our little video series, we'll jump into the Luxon config and configure a lighting installation with all its facets step by step. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, it's time to hit that button now. And here we go. Now let's take a look at the following floor plan. I've chosen an open plan living dining area of a single family house as an example, mainly because a floor plan like this often becomes a challenge in terms of not only how the lights are controlled, but also how they work together. However, everything we will be discussing can also be applied to commercial installations. It doesn't matter whether it's a smart office, a restaurant, or even a football stadium. Now, let's equip our space with a diverse range of light sources. For the ambient lighting, I decided to use the RGBW tree version of our LED spot. Straight away, one great advantage of the spot using Loxone tree technology is that we don't have to worry about defining the lighting groups. This all happens later in Loxone config and can of course be adjusted again at any time, which is a huge benefit for you as a Loxone partner. For indirect lighting, I'll be using an RGBW 24V compact dimmer tree, which will control LED strips. As we already have a tree cable coming to the room for our tree spots, I can install this dimmer module near the LED strip, rather than having to run a new cable back to the cabinet. Of course, a dim rail mounted version is also available. Above the kitchen island, I'll add three LED pendulum slim lights, which are also connected to the tree cable already being used for the spots and the LED strip. And last but not least, I'll also add a pendant light, which will be dimmed using one of the outputs on the dimmer extension. But be careful, there are a few things to consider for lights controlled via the dimmer extension. For example, the minimum and maximum load per output must be considered. The dimming type always plays a decisive role, and all the information about the Luxon dimmer extension can be found, as always, in our online documentation. As you can see now, in our example we've got various lighting circuits, all of which can be adjusted in terms of both brightness and color. So far so good. All components have been correctly selected, connected and configured using Luxon config. So now let's have a look at how all of these lights are controlled or even automated together. At Loxone, we spent a lot of time thinking about the most intuitive way to control lighting. This is why we have developed a standard concept that has proven its ease of use in hundreds of thousands of smart projects worldwide. Firstly, we believe that if something can be done automatically, it should be. Presence sensors can reduce the need for manual lighting control in many rooms. Through precise presence detection, including brightness measurement, the mini server can decide whether ambient lighting is necessary. For example, ambient lighting is automatically activated if the current brightness levels are below a set threshold. But in our example, there are various light circuits, which in a conventional installation could be on and off in countless combinations. Controlling all of these lighting circuits individually from a bank of switches on the wall would be, at the very least, confusing. This is why we recommend working with a range of lighting modes the customer will commonly use in that room or space. The lighting modes could look as follows. Ambient lighting. The entire room is neutrally lit with warm white light. Cooking. The focus here is on the lighting in the kitchen. The spots provide enough light to work well in the kitchen. And the rest of the room is only discreetly lit. Eating. As you can imagine, the focus here is on the lighting of the dining area. The pendants provide a pleasant light. And the remaining lights are discreetly dimmed. Cozy could mean the entire room is gently lit. In this lighting mood, we'll use discreetly colored light. However, color lighting should be used with care, as it can quickly become excessive. And for TV, here your customers can freely define a gentle yet atmospheric lighting mood to enjoy a movie or a TV show. The lighting moods can of course be created, changed and saved individually by your customers using the Luxone app. So far so good, but back to the ways of interacting with the lighting. Many customers do not want to pull out their mobile phones to adjust the lighting, and that's certainly not our intention when it comes to lighting with Luxone. This is exactly why we created the Luxone Touch standard, a simple operating concept that can be consistent for all users. As an increasing number of lighting circuits are now getting used in rooms, 
it's becoming very impractical to have a dedicated switch per circuit. Furthermore, controlling the temperature and the color of lights through a traditional switch is not possible. Therefore, our concept is a unified point of control for lighting, one where each tab selects one of the predefined lighting modes. So, let's play through the whole thing. We remember that automation is key. Therefore, we equip the room with presence sensors. Thus, when you enter the room, the ambient lighting is activated when it is needed. There are several points of control spread throughout the room. A touch pure in the entrance area, a touch surface integrated in the worktop, a touch pure near the dining area, and a remote air in the living room. Now, the lighting modes can be cycled through from each of these control points. This alone is a better way of doing things. But it's not perfect yet, because no matter what point of control you use, you may have to cycle through several lighting modes just to get the one you want. But don't worry, we thought of this and we've got a solution for this problem. The individual touch points can now be assigned to dedicated lighting modes, depending on where that device is placed. The remote air in the living area, for example, is assigned to the TV lighting mode. The touch surface is assigned to the cooking mode. The touch pure in the dining area is assigned to the dining mode, and so on. This certainly improves the user experience, recalling a default lighting mode for that space. But what else can we do to improve the experience? Let's imagine that your customers are sitting in the living area with the TV mood active. Now one of them would like to go to the kitchen to make a snack. Naturally, they'll need more light. Simply tapping the touch pure would change the entire lighting mood, dazzling anyone with bright light that is still watching the TV. This is why with Luxone, you have the ability to combine lighting moods. There are two different ways of doing this. The first is with a longer press. So the person goes into the kitchen, long presses on the touch, which we know is assigned to the cooking mood, and the two lighting moods are then mixed. The second way is to invert the behavior of the touch. So a single tap in the kitchen mixes the mood in or out rather than a long press. How a touch behaves can be set within the Luxone config. By the way, we will go into all these topics in our next episode. If the behavior of the touch has been inverted, then a longer press will be required to scroll through the various lighting moods. Implementing this streamlined way of interacting with the lighting will significantly increase the ease of use and comfort your customer's experience. But it's not only the range of touches that can enable mood mixing. This is also possible through the use of presence sensors. However, be careful when implementing this that the presence sensor in question only detects people in the area you want it to. Providing that this is the case, a mood can be automatically mixed in when that specific sensor detects presence. To summarize once again, automated lighting through presence sensors and operation through the points of control mentioned previously should cover the majority of daily use. However, should your customers need to make specific adjustments like creating or adapting a lighting mood, then these can be done via the Luxone app. This was an overview of the recommended way to control and interact with lighting. This episode forms the basis for our next video, where we will configure all of this step by step together in Luxone config. If you've got any questions about lighting with Luxone, simply write us a comment below. See you next time. <laughs>